Well, here we are in the studio of Gone Stained Glass. You can see all of our glass behind there. Today, well, <laughs> today I have a special project that I'm working on that I would like to invite you to be a part of today. And I would like to do a little explaining about it. So there was a show that was offered online and uh, during this you know pandemic period i'm kind of keeping an eye on those since you can't open up um, your work in galleries at this time and there was a a show that was look they were looking for um depictions of the book of mormon toward the last chapters i thought oh this might be interesting and so i i kind of read through some of the scripture and I found Ether 2 and 3. And it talks about, you know, barges and waves and, you know, just all exciting stuff. And I thought, I can do something with this. <laughs> so what I did, as you can see here, is um, I've taken those things, those symbols, and put them together in kind of a mandala-shaped window. I love meaning and symbolism in artwork. And I think probably the folks who are wanting this done were looking for paintings, sculpture, that sort of thing. But I have to, you know, just wave my, <laughs> my way into um, bringing stained glass in, which is probably not what they were thinking but maybe it's something that they would find interesting. So that's what we're kind of working on today is finding the meaning and the symbolism in this work. So maybe stained glass isn't what the judges had in mind but maybe we can open their minds to using the art of stained glass in what they had in mind to do. So we're going to try that. Okay, so I wanted to explain some of this too. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just tacking all the pieces together. When they're all tacked, then I will solder them, okay, and solder all the lines. So just to let you know what's happening here. So in the middle, and don't worry later, I will show you this more close up, so that's okay. So in the middle, it says in the scripture that the Lord talks to them through the clouds. So we've got some textured glass, and I found some beautiful textury glass that was white, a little bit of, um, of iridized in there just to give it that you know kind of a cloudy ethereal look so that's in the in the middle with of course the sky around it and that's the center so the Lord is going to tell them how to build these things how to where to go guide them and direct them so that's very important to the story okay and so he tells them to build eight barges or vessels that are going to be very tight and so no water can get in. So that's what these are, are the eight barges. On the next level, um, I wanted to show that they were on the water for 344 days. So I wanted to show the passing of time and didn't want to do 344 anythings. <laughs> so I have um, the phases of the moon and plus um, these red parts. So that shows the passing of time, day and night, day and night, and through all of that passage of time. Then the next circle here, you'll notice there are 16 little circles of um, an iridized glass there. Well, is the brother of Jared asked the Lord, how are we supposed to see if these ships are supposed to be so tight? How are we supposed to see in there? And so he brought the Lord 16 stones and said, could you touch these stones 
so that they will illuminate the inside of our ship. Done and done. So that's what this depicts is the 16 stones. And then the next layer out, um, the, the purpley black kind of swirly glass represents the winds, the high winds. There's got to be high winds because these vessels were, you know, were huge and they had to be pushed toward the land of promise, which is where they were going. So they were fierce winds. Uh, and which kind of makes me feel seasick already just thinking about it, but whoa. <laughs> and so um, the Lord has to help them through other things. I mean, not only how to see, but how to breathe, you know, how to, there are a lot of things they had to work out, I'm sure. <laughs> so that kind of depicts that. Now there are little bees, four little bees. It says that they brought swarms of bees with them. I don't know how they worked that out, but uh, that's what, and, and I think that that's representing all the things that they needed to bring with them. Having, you know, I don't know if they knew beforehand how long they were going to be on the water. Probably not. So they had to prepare and bring uh, animals and plants and bees. And so that's what that represents. And then the last layer of our mandala circle are the waves, you know, the waves of the ocean. And so that's what those are. Even though uh, somebody said they look like a saw blade and someone else said they look like the fins of a shark. Well, they could have, there could have been sharks out there, but they're the waves, okay? <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what I wanted. At first I was looking at um, Mayan and Aztec calendars and kind of, you know, how they um, put the circles in there, the different symbolism and stuff in the, in the calendar. That's kind of what I thought of at first. And then I thought of a mandala and I love mandalas. They're so meaningful, they're circular and they, they're kind of like a universe unto themselves. So I kind of was thinking about that too. So this is kind of the circle of life of that story. And hopefully I'll get it done because it's due today. <laughs> so I can do this, right? Yo, cross your fingers. So when I finish it, I will show you um, deeper into uh, this picture so that you can see the details and uh, more of the symbolism. And so I will let you know when that's done and we'll be back. So stay tuned, you gotta see it finished, right? <laughs> so as promised, I would like to show you the finished work. Um, so here are the fluffy clouds and the sky the eight barges, the passing of time with sun and moon, the 16 luminous stones, the four bees, the, let's see, this is the wind, and this is the waves. So this is a story that was told. I'll lift it up for you, can, so you can see the whole thing here. And I was just thinking about some of the stories that you could think of, you know, either for us to build, for you to build. It doesn't matter because glass is glass and we love it. And, but you could tell the story of the three bears. You could tell the story of, um, you know, Noah's Ark. Wouldn't that be cool? And then you could have all different animals and, and stuff. And the, oh, that, that one kind of blows my mind. But you can do you know, stories from your own ancestry. Wouldn't that be fun? So think, start thinking about that. What stories come to mind that you could put in stained glass and put it up in your window that would remind you of something that's special in your family or in your life or just a story that you want to have told and you want to remember. So this has been Jeannie in the Glass Studio. And I hope that you have gotten some ideas, is kind of twirling around 
in your mind about how to make stained glass a part of your life. So be sure to follow our channel, to like and subscribe. We want to hear from you, so make comments, because sometimes we see a comment of yours and say, ah, that's something maybe that we should touch on. So have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye. Thank you.